All right, so right here we have the Tascam Model 12, and right next to the Model 12, I have the MPC One Plus. I'm really excited today to do this video, and also because I'm right here, I'm hanging out with you guys. This is not my Model 12. This is actually a Model 12 that Zounds send over for, for I could review it and check it out, see how I like it. I've been using it for the past few weeks. I think it's been over a month already, and there is a lot of good things about the Model 12, and there's a few bad things that I don't really like about the Model 12, so I'll share those thoughts with you and overall uh, i'll see just who i think this model 12 is for is it something that i'm considering in purchasing down the road or is it a pass for me so stick around uh let's get right into it and have some fun so if you do not already know uh you could use a class compliant interface with any of your mpcs your mpc live one uh, or x just come out of the usb from the back of the mpc into your class compliant interface Make sure it's class compliant once you have that hooked up. As a matter of fact, I'll show you how you set that up. As soon as you connect from the USB to your class compliant interface, you go to your menu, preferences, you go to audio devices, and right here, you'll see any of those class compliant interface that should pop up. In this case, is the Model 12, so I select that right there, and I have this 32 uh, inputs and outputs checked also. Once you have that, Whenever you hit play, uh, everything is going to start monitoring through whatever uh, piece uh, or uh, interface you're using. Right here we have the Model 12. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, once I have the Model 12 hooked up to the MPC-1, uh, I am no longer going to be using the MPC-1 to monitor it through speakers. Also, if I want to sample into the MPC, I'm no longer using the inputs of the MPC because now it's kind of like this Model 12 is my MPC, my inputs and outputs and my monitoring section. Uh, let's get the positives uh, through first about the Model 12 because I'm just dying to jump into this. Uh, if we have, I have a beat right here loaded up. Uh, this In this beat right here, I have my drums on track one. I have my sample in track two, a synthesizer track three, and on four, this is actually my bass. I should name this bass. Uh, I'll let you guys hear the beat first and right now we're gonna jump into how I'm using this whole setup. <music> So this beat right here is something that I'm actually mixing uh, as we're filming this video. Talking about mixing, I think this is where this Model 12 is extremely fun. And I am running some outboard gear in this mix. I'm going to talk about that later. And if you're somebody that's like, you know, I don't want to buy compressors, EQs. I don't want to deal with that. Don't worry about that. This is still very fun right here. Uh, I have in channel one is my drums. My drums are in mono. So I'm not using an output, uh, a stereo output. So what I'm doing right here, I'm opening up this little eyeball icon and I'm routing the outputs of each individual track to some of these channel strips that you'll see right next, uh, right here on the Model 12. Let's say on my drums, since they're mono, I'm coming out of outputs one. You go ahead and select uh, these outputs right here. I'll make sure I'm selected in output one. If I solo those drums, this is where my drums are coming to right now. And then in track number two, I have my sample. My sample is in stereo, so I'm using outputs three and four. So now they're gonna be mirroring these channels three and four right here. Now, since they are in stereo, I am panning left and right. In channel five, uh, I will have my synthesizer. So that's on output five. So that's what we got right there. And on out and, and on channel four, which is my bass, is gonna be on output six. So that will be on channel six. So whatever outputs you have selected, that's gonna be the, the faders that you have right here on your model 12. So that alone is a huge thumbs up for me. Uh, let's be honest, if you use an MPC and you've tried to mix using the MPC, it's not very intuitive. I do not like it as much. I don't think it's 
like I don't feel like I'm mixing. I feel like I'm on an iPad just dial like it's not fun. If you go to your track mixer right here, this is technically your mixer right here. And when you're moving over to faders and you're starting to use these faders, it just feels so different. I actually feel like I'm interacting with my mix just alone, just volume control. It feels so, so much better. Uh, but still, just feeling the faders just it makes my mixes come to life a lot faster. And I I don't know, I just kind of feel I guess I it makes me feel a little more professional versus versus just uh, trying to adjust with your finger right here on the LCD screen. Now, a quick overview as we're mixing and using these faders to dial in our mixes, something else that I find uh, really, really fun, uh, at least for me when I've been mixing, uh, this right here has a compressor. This compressor is actually not too bad. I've been using it. And then right underneath the compressor, you have this EQ. You have your high band, uh, 10 kilohertz, and then you have your bandwidth right here, you can select what uh, frequency, and then you have your boost and uh, cut. And then right here, you have your 80 hertz boost or cut down here for your low frequencies. Uh, this EQ's actually, it, it's kind of like a love or hate. I don't think it sounds good at all when you're trying to boost frequencies. Uh, it just breaks apart my signal. Uh, it's something that I kind of didn't like. I would try to crank up some highs on certain channels, and it was just, I don't know, it just does not sound that good. But when it comes down to cleaning up certain channels, it works like a charm. Uh, uh, there's, like, let's just say right here, right here. So with these drums, if you want to add some highs, just right at your fingertips. I love that. There's so many times when I'm producing music, take off the highs. I was cleaning up a little bit right here on some of these frequencies. Now, the reason why this is actually really nice to have, even though I don't think is the best sounding EQ, is because there's so many times when you're producing music, uh, something right away, you're just making music and you're just very fast. You're not being technical. You're not being no mixing engineer. You're just being a, a human being and you hear a certain frequency that's annoying and really fast. You don't have to go into your plugin list. You could just dial that out and, and take off those frequencies that are annoying you and boom, you could just keep going. So I like having, you know, a small EQ right here. And then right underneath that, you have your auxiliary send one, auxiliary send two, and then your pan left and right. So those few things that I just went over, let's just say you're somebody that is interested in just mixing, doing a quick mix right here, using some of the EQ, some of the compression right there. Uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't even play the compression. Look, the right here on the drums, let's engage this compressor. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's good. It's a good compressor. It doesn't allow you to uh, uh, dial in your attack release or anything like that. But for anybody that wants to interact with their mixes and use faders, uh, this right here is awesome. Uh, the outputs of this, it will be coming out of uh, outputs left and right. That's going into my DAW, and I'm just tracking my mix like that. That sounds great. Now, I wanted to see how I can incorporate some pieces of outboard gear. How can I send my drums into something like a compressor, then an EQ, and then bring it back to the board? Uh, that's where it gets fun for me, and uh, that's what I kind of want to jump into right now on the types of outputs you're going to find in your Model 12 and uh, how I'm bringing signal right back in. If you're using your Model 12 as an act, not as an interface, if you flitch, f uh, switch <laughs> these PCs to live, they will no longer get, receive signal from the MPC. It will now receive signal from a live instrument. One thing to keep in mind, inputs one and two will have inserts selected right here. So you could use uh, inserts with these two channels. So you can actually come out of one and two. They will have an output insert and you can connect into a compressor and then come back in. And now when you hit insert, it will automatically run the signal to the compressor or whatever piece of outboard gear you have. That's cool. But then it does not work because I'm like, well, I don't want to plug nothing in here. I actually want to use those inserts for something like my drums that I already have in the MPC. So if I go back to PC, I no longer, I cannot use those inserts. So I'm not able to plug in outboard gear and utilize that the way I would want to. So the other workaround that we'll have for anybody that's just 
wants to run signal from their uh, session into some pieces is using your uh, FX1 and also using your sub mixes. So on the back of the Model 12, you will have uh, four outputs, uh, FX1 and 2 outputs, and then you have your sub 1 and 2 in stereo. So that's how I'm now sending pieces to something like a compressor or an EQ or a effects pedal like this microcosm we have right here. Let me go ahead and show you what I have going on right now. So right now I'm actually using this drums channel. This is where I have my drums. And I'm sending these drums and I'm not sending this to my main mix. This is my main mix. This is what you guys are hearing. I'm not going to send my drums to the main mix. I'm actually gonna send those drum, that drum channel to my sub mix. So I engage sub right here. Once I engage sub, now this channel is going into this fader or into this channel that says sub. And what am I sending out of the back of this Model 12 or the sub out? I'm coming out of the sub mix on the back of the Model 12 into this successor from Heritage Audio. I'm compressing my signal, coming out of that compressor into this EQ, and then out of this EQ into inputs 9 and 10. And now inputs 9 and 10 is not going to be PC inputs because this is not a signal that's coming from my MPC. Now these are going to be live inputs that are coming directly from uh, the actual physical inputs on the back of my Model 12. So now uh, if I hit play, this fader is just how much signal I'm sending out to my compressor. As you see, the successor right there is, is being triggered. And now I'm doing my processing right here, my compression. So now we can actually hear it in the full mix, unsolo that uh, drum bus. All right, so that's what I have going on right now with my uh, drums. And this is a big for me. I, I want to have flexibility to grow with my setup. So what's going to help me uh, grow and develop? Uh, I might just have an MPC today, but I already know that in a year from now or two years from now, my vision, and you always want to be thinking long term. That's why I always say, like, why are you doing this? Why did you purchase an MPC? Are you just a hobbyist or are you somebody that doesn't know anything right now, but you know that you're going to develop your skill in the future, then if that's the case, then you wanna invest in gear that has longevity, that's gonna allow you to maybe, uh, in, in a year from now, you'll get a compressor, a EQ, a, a preamp. Uh, now, I only have two more outputs that I can use or one more output that I can use, and how can I tap into that? Well, you also have, in the back of your Model 12, your effects one and two. So coming out of effects one and two, that gives you an additional two outputs. Uh, so right now, I'm coming out of effects one, coming into my microcosm, and then coming out of microcosm into seven and eight. So seven and eight, I can actually put a sticker right here and name this microcosm. So now, if I want, let's just say uh, that we have my drums. Actually, let's do it with the drums. And I wanna send those drums into microcosm. I'm using effects one. I already have this microcosm channel set up all the way to Unity, and then I start cranking up FX1, and we're gonna start hearing the drums being processed. Oh, yes. Yo, that's so fun. Okay, I mean, you can start getting creative and start blending these. Uh, let's actually now send, uh, we'll go ahead and send the synthesizer Jeez. get the idea of being able to use these inputs and outputs uh, these sends that we have right here i mean i'm using a microcosm you could have any distortion pedal you can have any effects pedal guys this is where it gets so fun and i always talk about this i always talk about uh using some pieces of valboard i enjoy uh, guitar pedals because it's an affordable way to start incorporating distortion delays reverbs these are the the things that i'm using with the model 12 that has made it very fun for me it kind of again i'll say what I said in the beginning, it gives me an analog feel, kind of getting over the goods and the positive of the Model 12. Now I kind of want to jump into some of the negatives of the Model 12, I guess uh, some of the things that I'm not too 
like excited about. Uh, and one of them is the the preamps on the Model 12. Uh, they're not as good for me. Like they're, you got to crank up these preamps so, so much to get some good signal. So if you're going to be using these preamps, you want to make sure you have, uh, I mean, I guess with a condenser microphone, they will be fine. But if you got something like uh, one of these right here, I have the SM7, um, you're going to need a cloud lifter for sure because you have to crank this up a little more than usual, uh, at least for me, when I'm using these uh the, the preamps on the model 12 so it could be a bit noisy now another thing is just uh the the feel of these uh pots right here of these knobs uh, i mean look uh, to counteract that this m this model 12 is 699 the price of it us dollars which is is really affordable uh, but these knobs are they're pretty flimsy you will not feel like you know solid knobs like they feel a little flimsy they're not built so strong uh and on the positive side coming down to the faders these faders do feel good they actually have a little bit of uh, tension as you're going up so they're just not faders that will slide up they they got a little bit of tension so that it feels good the faders feel amazing but the pots they're they're a little loose plasticky they do not feel sturdy at all and another thing is uh the usb connection on the back of the model 12 i'm not sure if it's just with this unit but I find it to be very delicate. So if I'm in the back and I've this had it's happened already so many times, I'm trying to plug in a cable or plug out a cable, uh, I move the USB C connection just a bit and it will disconnect from my uh, MPC and it gives me an error sign. I, I mean, there's no big deal. I just reconnect it, go back to my settings and make sure it's connected. So I find that little USB-C jack to be a bit flimsy. Other than that, I do enjoy uh, running in uh, some pieces of outboard gear to this machine. Now, my overall thought on the Model 12, uh, I feel like it's a great unit uh, for, again, $699. I think it's, I mean, it's, it's a very, very affordable piece for what it can do. You guys saw me running pieces of outboard gear. Well, it'll allow me up to two pieces of outboard gear, at least for my setup. I, I don't think it's enough. I would like to have more inputs and outputs. I think two, it's good, but it's not enough, at least towards where I'm going going. Uh, again, I'm thinking like five years ahead of, of today and I don't want to spend money on something. And then two years down the line, I'm like, oh man, I should have gone this one because I, you know, of the direction where I'm going with my studio. Um, it, this is a great piece. If you're like, you know what, uh, two pieces of outboard gear, if I want to buy two effects pedals and use that as my reverb and another one as my delay, this is awesome. This is perfect. And let's just say you're just, you know what, I don't even care about outboard gear. Uh, just alone, using the faders, the EQs, uh, this alone right here makes it so much better <laughs> to mix versus that like it just feels a lot it will make you feel a lot better and at least for me it makes me want to make music it makes me want to mix my music and i think that's important because sometimes i produce beats and i'm like oh man now i have to mix this but with something like this so compact and perfect for a, a beat making setup and i do say like sample based beat making because for us we most of us won't be using 20 tracks a lot of us would just use like eight tracks or less so this is perfect for a, a giving yourself a good mix uh, using these tools right here now for me uh, i'm still kind of thinking and, and debating if this is something that i would consider for myself not because it's just not good enough but because of where i'm going i feel like uh, if you guys have been following me for quite some time you'll notice that my previous videos I've been in a garage. I, I lived in a garage with my wife and my three-year-old daughter. And while I lived in that garage, I wasn't going to just ignore my family and be like, hey, I'm going to put uh, speakers here and a rack of outboard. Like, no, I, I wanted to stay conservative and hey, I just have my MPC, give my family their space and just work with my little corner. Well, now, if you guys notice, uh, I'm in a different location, and now I have my own studio in my own room, so now I'm like, all right, cool, now I can start building my studio little by little. So my vision and where I'm going next is 
putting my studio together, uh, buying pieces of outboard gear, buying some compressors, buying some uh, amplifiers, buying some reverb, some delays. So I do want to start building and incorporating a lot of pieces of outboard gear. So for me, I don't think the Model 12 will be something that will be able to hang with me five years from now. So I'm not too sure if it's something that I will be sticking with. I'm still going to be checking out other pieces. Uh, as of right now, uh, I am going through a hibernation right now with my mixing. It's switching a lot. My setup, I'll make a whole different video on how my setup is starting to look now, the, the way I'm working in this new studio. Uh, but overall, the Model 12, I give it a thumbs up. Uh, the downside of it, it's not a big issue. It's just little small minor details, but it's definitely something that I could recommend and uh, I can see other people enjoying. Uh, the Model 12. So uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you guys are interested on something like the Model 12, an MPC, or any of these pieces, go down to the links of this video. I have affiliate links that really helps out the channel. So if you guys do want to check any of those out, make sure you use my links. And uh, you have a blessed day. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll catch y'all on the next video. Peace.